Speaking of adults, I want to uh, talk about the Prime Minister. Let's have a look at this. We haven't lost a news poll since I've been Prime Minister. We haven't lost a news poll since I've been Prime Minister. Well, Caro, that's what he said in February. He's lost one now. What do you reckon? He has lost a news poll. Yeah, I, I, tempting fate. Tempting fate, and particularly when, you know, you have error after error, mistake after mistake. You know, they can't get any clear air on, on anything that they want to talk about. They have totally lost control of the political landscape, of the narrative and, and, how, and how the government is being perceived. So I would stop talking about things that you can't control and, and try and get back to basics on the things that they can control. You know, pro since that, that high point for them in, what, September 22 or something like that, we have seen seen a very steady decline. It has lulled a bit the last few months and, and it's almost like it broke through the inevitable barrier of that 50%. Um, but, Chris, what, what good news is there for the government and, and what good news can they give Australians? How can they, how can they tell us that they are, they are doing things in the best interests of the country when it is just drama after drama, disaster after disaster and a clown show? Great piece from uh, Cameron Milner I, I just read um, that has uh, been released in the nightly for this evening, which just talks about the absolute schmozzle, the absolute shambles that is the Albanese government. Yeah, I reckon they're really... Gemma, I reckon things are going to get worse for them. Now, I'm not suggesting, I'm, I'm not predicting that uh, the coalition could win government in its own right, but there's certainly a chance that it can. I think Labor will go down further. It's, uh, it's, it's worth pointing out that today's the anniversary, one-year anniversary of the voice referendum defeat, and I think throughout that, the way he totally stuffed up that project and that campaign mm. is really when people started questioning his judgement and his priorities. I think it's more than, Caro just alluded to something quite correct, like losing the control of narratives and things like that. But what's more powerful here and what the government hasn't seemed to yet clue into is that it has lost the faith and the trust of the electorate mm. and the people like you and me who pay mortgages and go about our businesses and see um, the social discord that this government refuses to aggressively and with strength approach. Like, I mean, let's talk about it from, sure, Mr Albanese's role as Prime Minister, but Jason Clare's comments last week about the Middle East situation, back in your box, mate. Yeah, yeah. Deal with your portfolio. Deal with the issue on university campuses. How about starting by making university mm. campuses responsible for the outrageous impacts and, and, and episodes of anti-Semitism from the University of Western Australia that's been widely reported back in our home state to uh, the Melbourne University where the professor was, you know, a essentially held, he comes to his office and, and there are masked, masked protesters holding his office hostage. Yeah. And then you've got, you know, the University of Sydney well publicised. You've got a government that has lost connection with the electorate. It has lost, for whatever reason, the understanding of what makes Australians tick. We want to live our lives in peace. We believe and, and value social cohesion. And my sense, Chris, and I'm not at, for, for, the, for those who don't know, my, my day job is in, in a sector, but I don't do polling. I don't do any of that political stuff. My gut as a voter and someone who's been around a little bit is that Australians have got their baseball bats out for this yeah. government and they're at the front door and and they're just waiting for an opportunity to swing them. Yeah, I, I get the same sense. Uh, the, 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 everybody's worse off. There's no agenda. There's, the, the, there's. He's talking about no, chips, empty yeah. chip bags it's, on social media. I mean, it's a that's, nonsense. That's right, as I showed last week. Yeah, shrinkflation is his... And even that, he's copied from Joe Biden. It is embarrassing. Uh, speaking of uh, little diversions, uh, Mark Butler, the health minister, has been talking about uh, getting involved in a 24-hour boycott of, uh, of social media... Um, Cara, that, that ain't going to fix anything. That's a bit of a gesture. I mean, I think uh, kids in particular need to be off it altogether, right? Yeah, it, it is a gesture, but it's, I guess it's kind of like the dry July for, for social media. Why do we have to call it a boycott? Why don't we have it? Why don't we call it a connect with other human beings and be <laughs> yes. normal people day, <laughs> as opposed to uh, as opposed to a boycott of social media? I, I, I don't really like the way yeah. that that is pitched, but you know, I, I think the less time that people spend on their phones, <laughs> the better, and, and particularly kids, get them outside running around, give them something positive uh, to talk about and do. Run 
rather than mm -hmm. uh, be fixated yeah, on just, social uh, media. I guess these things sort of need leadership in a way, but if, if everyone just has better habits, it becomes less of an issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be Organic Friends Day instead of Digital Friends real Day. Life friends. Uh, real Life Friends. Totally. <laughs> um, now, speaking of Real Life <laughs> Friends, this is a story about the NAB, uh, the National Australia Bank, uh, Gemma. Were well, they going to get rid of grog at work functions? Apparently the bank's been well known for still having sort of beer at functions, even during you know, work lunches and whatever. I'm shocked because I know the world used to be like that, but just about every workplace has no grog involved these days. I, I was at a, a lunch function before I went on holidays here in Sydney and, you know, people are serving what No one's drinking it. No one's... I mean, it was there because I guess it's part of the offering for the function, but no one was drinking it. And, mm. I mean, I'm the world's greatest lightweight and have been since I was, you know, an adult and of drinking age, so I can't... I don't drink at lunchtime anyway because I need a nap. It's very simple. But coming again from Western Australia, the great mining state... Dry workplaces have been a thing for a very, very long time and the view was taken that the head office, for example, that, you know, the traditional white-collar office should be dry if the work yeah, site in the yeah, Pilbara is enough, dry, yeah. for example. So mm. I read the story and had the same reaction, went... They're still boozing up at NAB? Wow. Well, not anymore. They're joining the rest <laughs> of the country yeah. uh, now.